Hi guys, I'm Dr. Zena Vora, your educator on an academy and we are doing this series on syndromes where we are looking at them alphabetically just to reduce our syndrome of phobia a bit. Uh, so this is the second part which is going to be focused on the letter B. So let's begin with the first syndrome from letter B which is very very important uh, which is called Berthold-Dupe syndrome. So remember Berthold-Dupe syndrome is actually a triad. So there are three words in the syndrome itself and there are three uh, pertinent features to it. The first one is the renal mass. So when you see the CECT, remember the contrast enhanced CT, the bones are white. You can see contrast within the vessel and the kidney, it's a contrast enhanced CT and in the right kidney there is this round ball type lesion. Alright, so remember kidney lesions, we divide them into ball type, bean type depending on the morphology. So rounded mass, ball type lesion, when it infiltrates in the reniform shape of the kidney is maintained, that is called a bean type of lesion, the prototype of which is a transitional cell. See it. So anyways, here we are seeing that there is a ball type when defined lesion in the kidney which is enhancing and the main feature that you can see here is this central scar. Right, so what is the renal mass with a central steroid scar? It is an oncocytoma. Alright, so an oncocytoma or a chromophobe RCC, both of which look indistinguishable on imaging. That is the first part of birth hog tube which is the renal tumor. When we look at the skin lesions here, you can see that there are multiple follicular based lesions. These are fibrofolliculomas. These are fibrofolliculomas. So remember skin lesions, the second part of the triad and the third part is presence of lung cysts. So you will see lung cysts will sometimes can rupture and lead to what? lead to pneumothorax that you see here. There is this air in the pleural space. You can see no bronchovascular markings. This is the visceral pleura. So this is pneumothorax which you can see here and there are some loculated foci as well that you can see. Alright, so berthog dupe syndrome. Remember it's a syndrome which has mutation in the folliculin gene on chromosome 17 and the triad is oncocytoma lung cysts and follicular lesions, fibrofollicular mass. Going on to the next syndrome which is Binswagger disease or syndrome. This is a cause of subcortical vascular dementia. Alright, so remember vascular dementia is the most common cause of dementia all over the world. It leads to a step ladder type of decline predominantly in the executive function. That is how we characterize vascular dementia. What we can see here again for dementia, for vascular dementia per se, remember investigation of choice is going to be MRI and here I am showing you a flare image. You can see that the ventricles do not have white CSF and you can see the edema as hyper intense. So we are seeing that there are these patchy multifocal hyper intensities in the subcortical white matter, right? So these are the hyper intensities which represent ischemic demyelination. So these are actually changes which have occurred because of small vessel disease. So in Binswagger disease what happens is the smaller vessels basically will lead to ischemic demyelination. When the smaller vessels undergo arteriosclerosis the narrowing of which leads to ischemia of the white matter and the white matter gets affected and there is vascular dementia as a result. So this entire process is called as Binswagger disease and sometimes these changes can be referred to as leukoergosis. Right? So remember this term leuco for white matter, areosis for the demyelinating changes. So this is the second one Binswagger disease. The third one very very important for our exams is Berger's disease. So remember this is BER Berger's disease which is nothing but IgA nephropathy. So IgA nephropathy the most common glomerulonephritis that you have the most common cause of microscopic hematuria both of which are Berger's or IgA nephropathy and as the name suggests what are you going to find? So we are going to have deposits of IgA predominantly where? Predominantly in the mesangium. So on the histopath image here on the light microscopy you can see mesangial proliferation and in the immunofluorescence, you can see deposits of IgA along the mesangium. Alright, so this is the characteristic appearance of IgA nephropathy that we're going to remember or Berger's disease. And one very important distinguishing factor versus post streptococcal glomerulonephritis is the fact that 
this will also uh, basically proceed any infection any urti but this is basically proceeding days after the urti whereas psg and usually occurs weeks after the uh, infection all right so this is something that you can have as a history that there was history of urti and then there's microscopic hematuria just days after the urti or ongoing with the urti talking about burgess disease okay on the other hand a confuser which is a burgess disease with a u here so when a u comes here remember we are talking about u ke paas hi we have v so remember we are talking about a vasculitis so burgess disease is a vasculitis it's a non atherosclerotic inflammatory process which is burgers disease all right so from burgers i want you to remember it's also called as thromboangitis obliterans it tends to affect the medium and the small vessels along with that the important part here is it, it just not not affect the arteries but also the veins as well as the nerves can also be involved all right so this affects the small and medium vessels the lymphatics typically are the ones which are the only things which are spared here now the important part imaging wise what is the pathognomonic feature it's this corkscrew collateral so remember we have these corkscrew collaterals that can be noted here in the demographics in burgers disease i want you to remember it is a typical typical history that you will get a young smoker more common in the males that you will have who develops who comes with gangrene and lower limb is affected more commonly than the upper limb here right and the medium vessels will be affected so here you will have the radial and the tibial vessels which are most commonly involved finally the last one that we have is the barlow syndrome when in what happens so if i tell you that this is the normal mitral wall look at what has happened to it it's become very very degenerated and floppy so there is myxoid degeneration there is myxoid degeneration of mitral wall and because of that it collapses right it collapses into the left atrium leaving systole producing a mid systolic click so this is the barlow syndrome where you have myxoid degeneration and there is collapse so mitral wall collapse it can lead to myxoid degeneration producing this click it's called barlow syndrome and you can get an image based question where the balls are completely expanded like so so these were the syndromes with b that we had to do so quick recap berthold duke syndrome the triad brings wagner disease the cause of vascular dementia Burgers disease and Burgers disease. So any time you have a U, we are talking about V. So vasculitis and Barlow syndrome for mitral valve prolapse. We'll see you all tomorrow with the letter C and the various syndromes to that. So take care and happy studying.